We are taught that humans went from being hunter-gatherers and peopling the earth prior to 8000 BC to developing settled agriculture and raising livestock during Neolithic times, the period of Earth's history beginning around 8000 BC and lasting until around 600 BC. This, in turn, we are told, led to permanent settlements and the rise of civilizations. My name is Michelle Gibson. The problem with this description of human evolution is what our ancestors were actually accomplishing during early Neolithic times, and it went far, far beyond what we are told humanity was capable of. It has to do with the consummate aligning of heaven and earth worldwide, with the perfect implementation of sacred geometry and astronomical alignments in the landscape, as well as with the measurement of astronomical and cyclical time through careful observations of the heavens over a very long period of time. We are explicitly taught that Indians wearing loincloths were responsible for building the perfectly geometrically and astronomically aligned mounds and earthworks, one basket full of dirt at a time, especially where mounds in North America are concerned. I will show you exactly why this assertion does not hold up under scrutiny in this video. Watson Brake in Richwood, Louisiana, near Monroe, is dated to 5,400 years ago and is considered to be the oldest earthwork mound complex in North America. It is located on private property and is not open for public viewing. Note the summer and winter solstice alignments depicted here in this diagram of Watson Brake. This is the famous Stonehenge in southern England, believed to date to about 5,100 years ago, and has a similar earthwork to what is seen at Watson Brake in Louisiana, encircling the big stones, and which is well known for its solstice alignments. Stonehenge has a really nice alignment with the Milky Way as well. For those of you who may not be aware of it, there is a so-called modern replica of Stonehenge in Mary Hill, Washington, said to have been commissioned in the early 20th century by the wealthy entrepreneur Sam Hill and dedicated on July 4th of 1918 as a memorial to the people who died in World War I. In addition to having a solstice alignment, It also has a nice alignment going on with the Milky Way, just like Stonehenge in England. The Avebury Neolithic complex is located near Stonehenge and is dated to the same time frame as Stonehenge and Watson Break in Louisiana. Today, this is what is left of the standing stones at Avebury. Of what was an ancient temple complex. Silbury Hill is located near Avebury and is called the tallest prehistoric man-made mound in Europe and one of the largest in the world. Crop circles frequently form in these locations in England. Serpent Mound in Peebles, Ohio is the largest serpent effigy in the world. It was first reported from surveys included in a book called Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley, published in 1848 by the Smithsonian Institution and to this day has not been given a definite date of construction. Serpent Mound has many astronomical alignments contained within its shape, as well as sacred geometry. As with Silbury Hill near Avebury, the Miamisburg Mound in Miamisburg, Ohio, is located relatively close to the Serpent Mound. And crop circles in North America are found frequently in this part of Ohio. In Newark, Ohio, the Octagon and Great Circle Earthworks is located on a golden ratio longitude, along with Poverty Point in Louisiana. Newark is 94 miles or 150 kilometers from Peebles, Ohio, where the Serpent Mound is located. This diagram shows the lunar alignments marked by these earthworks in Ohio. By the way, the Octagon and Great Circle of Newark are today part of the golf course of the Mound Builders Country Club. Another striking example of this practice by the Ancient Ones of the consummate aligning of heaven and earth is found near Forres in Scotland. Forres is in the Grampian Mountains, which are said to have the highest concentration of stone circles found anywhere and include what are called the recumbent stone circles, found only in this part of Scotland and in the far southwest of Ireland. This is the recumbent stone circle of Crowthy Moor near Forres. The center stone, weighing upwards of 50 tons, is perfectly placed in the landscape. 
for lunar events like this one, as the moon is seen rolling along the top of the recumbent stone on the same night. While the stone circles of Great Britain and Ireland are the best known, there are stone circles in many places, including in Africa, like the Bagnold Stone Circle in the Libyan Desert, the Mazora Stone Circle in Morocco, and Nabta Playa, depicted with astronomical alignments in southern Egypt, situated on the Tropic of Cancer. Also on the Tropic of Cancer, Necker Island, part of the northwestern Hawaiian Islands in the Pacific Ocean, is a relatively small island with over 30 stone temples and shrines. These have been studied by archaeoastronomy experts for astronomical alignments. This is a shrine on Necker Island and a sketch of a temple platform there. Famous early astronomical observatories included El Caracol, which was located in the Mayan archaeological complex of Chichen Itza, located on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It is dated to around 906 AD. The Maya had a spectacular knowledge of astronomy, were skilled engineers, and had a calendrical system which could calculate time far into the past and into the future. When this observatory was being excavated, advanced design features were discovered that incorporated sophisticated knowledge about how to align the central observatory with the cosmos. For example, designed into the outer terrace are two slots that follow the curvature of the tower and which could have supported a viewing apparatus of some sort. In China, the Gaocheng Astronomical Observatory is located in Dengfeng in Henan Province. The Great Observatory was said to have been built in 1276 to observe the movement of the sun, the stars, and to record time. It has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2010 as the Dengfeng Historic Monuments in the Center of Heaven and Earth. Dengfeng is due east of Xi'an, China, where there are a significant number of pyramids. The Torian, or observatory at Machu Picchu in Peru, is called a rare example of curved Inca architecture, incorporating natural features into its design. It was said to have been built in 1450 AD. It was placed inside the Temple of the Sun at the highest altitude of Machu Picchu. The tower is built around a stone with a curved groove that is illuminated as the rising sun shines through one window on the June solstice. Around this same time, this window frames the Pleiades star cluster, which we are told was used by the Incas to determine when to plant potatoes. Sounds like incredibly sophisticated astronomical engineering to only serve as an almanac in stone. The ancient observatory in Shanquillo, Peru, said to date back to 300 BC, has 13 regularly spaced towers, where you can see the sunrise and set in gaps between the towers, with the sunrise moving back and forth across the whole structure in a year. Now on to what are said to be more modern observatories. In northern India, we are told that between 1724 and 1730, Jai Singh II, the Raja of Jaipur oversaw the construction of five monumental stone observatories called Jantar Mantars across his domains. The primary purpose of these observatories was for the study of space and time. There is one in Delhi, an ancient city and the seat of the Mughal Empire. It is interesting to note that the Jantar Mantar, in what is now called New Delhi, is surrounded by the government buildings of India in a geometric configuration. Other Jantar Mantars are in Jaipur, a collection of 19 architectural instruments forming the largest stone observatory in the world, including the world's largest stone sundial. In Varanasi, India, a major religious center in India and considered the holiest city of Hinduism and Jainism. In the holy city of Ujjain, with 13 architectural astronomy instruments. And the Jantar Mantar of Mathura, an ancient city believed to be the homeland and birthplace of Krishna. Vedic astronomy has ancient roots in India, going way, way, way back in time. We are told the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England was commissioned in 1675 by King Charles II and the site on Greenwich Hill chosen by architect and astronomer Sir Christopher Wren. 
The building of the observatory was then completed in the summer of 1676. It has been the location of the Earth's prime meridian since 1851. The time ball at the Royal Observatory at Greenwich was said to have been in use since 1833. Every day the ball rises halfway up to the mast at 12.55 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, up to the top at 12.58 p.m., and drops exactly at 1 p.m. We are told this practice was established in order to have a standardized way to mark time for naval ships and the citizenry. The United States Naval Observatory, located in Washington, D.C., is said to be one of the oldest scientific agencies in the United States. The Naval Observatory maintains the master clock for the United States. There is also a time ball here, said to have been installed in 1845 and dropped every day, enabling the inhabitants of Washington to set their timepieces. Since I believe that all of these observatories were built by the advanced ancient civilization, I don't believe their original purpose was to synchronize the time in this manner. What if, instead of measuring linear time, time balls were a way to measure astronomical time, and instead of dropping quickly in mere minutes, were dropped very slowly to measure astronomical time, like solstices and equinoxes? Other places with time balls include the Sydney Observatory in Australia, the Nelson Monument on the highest point of Calton Hill in Edinburgh, Scotland, which is right next to the City Observatory of Edinburgh, the Cincinnati Observatory at one point in time had a time ball, but apparently not anymore. And the time ball in Times Square, which gets dropped once a year to usher in the new year. In an interesting aside, the United States Naval Observatory also has a station in Flagstaff, Arizona for National Dark Sky Observation. The Lowell Observatory is also in Flagstaff. The Atmospheric Research Observatory is on the campus of Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. The Vatican has an advanced technology telescope at an observatory in Safford in southeast Arizona, which is located very close to the Mount Graham International Observatory in Swift Trail, Arizona. In taking this tour through time, I wanted to share with you the absolutely stunning accomplishments of our ancestors, impeccably aligning the physical infrastructure of the Earth with heavenly bodies and astronomical events, and accurately keeping track of everything going on up above via observatories, watching, recording, and predicting larger cycles of time to keep humanity in synchronization with each other and the heavens.